safety a priority for businesses allowed to reopen from tomorrow. All NAB home helpers cleared by the health ministry expected back to work tomorrow. And in sports, an elite Belgian athlete uses the COVID-19 break to his advantage. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC Newsnight, starting now. Very good evening to you with this weekend edition of CBC Newsnight. I'm Ryan Broom, and our top story. Home helpers and other field staff of the National Assistance Board who have tested negative for COVID-19 and who have been cleared for duty by the Ministry of Health and Wellness will re return to work tomorrow. Now, this was among the outcomes of a meeting between the government and the National Union of Public Workers earlier today. Now, it was called to discuss a number of matters related to the cluster of positive cases of COVID-19 diagnosed among the NAB staff and the associated implications for staff and clients of the NAB and the broader public health management of COVID-19 in Barbados. Now, that meeting was chaired by Acting Prime Minister Santia Bradshaw, who provided some insight into the key outcomes. We agreed that all workers who tested negative and who've been assessed and cleared by the Ministry of Health and Wellness will continue their duties in support of the elderly in care or those that may be shut in and will return to work from tomorrow, Monday the 4th of May. Elderly persons and their families can therefore be assured that there will be no disruption of care of the elderly. Workers can also be assured that the necessary personal protective equipment will be provided to them to continue to carry out their duties. And we've also agreed to improve the channels of communication between the respective ministries and the staff of the National Assistance Board to keep them abreast of all new developments. Now, it was also agreed that NAB staff who tested positive for COVID-19 would be housed in the isolation center at Harrison's Point. A commitment was also made that all outstanding payments of wages and salaries to NAB staff, which may have been delayed by the requirement of quarantine of the office staff, would be paid no later than Tuesday, May 6th. Well, Chairman of the Barbados Private Sector Association, or BPSA, Ed Clark, says the additional businesses allowed to operate under Phase 2 of government's exit strategy for a lockdown from tomorrow are making safety a major priority. He says while it is important to ensure that more people are able to be employed at this time and that the country is able to resume business activity, safety of both the workers and the general public is paramount. He made the comment during an interview with CBC News. The construction industry and the retail sector, you know, various protocols have been laid out for that. We have also done a protocol for the office sector, the sort of services sector, working out of offices. Um, that there is has been circulated, a draft has been circulated to membership to make sure that people are prepared and train their employees to teach them how to how to operate within this environment. The physical distancing, the P, uh, PPE uh, equipment for the, the staff, and generally speaking, try to ensure that you don't encourage a lot of people into your buildings unless they're. Now, Mr. Clark, as a lot of cleaning and preparations have been taking place since most of the businesses would have been closed for the past five weeks. He also believes that some businesses may not be able to reopen by tomorrow, but may do so later. We expect that there will, be, there will not be a full staffing in many businesses, and in the offices especially. And you will see a rearrangement of, of people's sitting, sitting arrangements to allow the distance in during work. Obviously, people also, the employers need to ensure that they have proper arrangements in place for the lunch rooms and so on, um, the use of elevators and so on in buildings, so that you, you ensure the physical distancing stays in place. Also, the wearing of masks by the general public coming into buildings, I think, is something that you will see most offices requiring that, most businesses requiring that. In other news, for females living with endometriosis, every month is a struggle, and it has become even more difficult for them during the current COVID-19 lockdown. But as we hear in this Rian Phillips report, the Katrina Endometriosis Fund Association of Barbados, headed by Endo Warrior Katrina Aline, has stepped up its assistance to women at this time. It has been more than 20 years since Katrina Aline was first diagnosed with endometriosis. 
It's a condition where tissue similar to the lining of the womb starts to grow in other places such as the ovaries and fallopian tubes. Since 2016, she has been helping women living with the disorder through the Katrina Endometriosis Fund Association of Barbados. So far we have started to do outreach, outreach programs where uh, we are supplying women with the necessities that they don't have um, basically without the pandemic. So now the pandemic is here. It is more frustrating because we are not getting the amount of help that we would have been getting before. With the COVID-19 lockdown still in effect, the demand for those bundles has increased significantly. Once upon a time, you would have done a care package to facilitate a mother, but now you have to facilitate a daughter, a niece, you know, an aunt. So it is more, the need is more of a necessity right now in the pandemic. We have roll-on, you have toilet tissue, pads, which is sanitary napkins, you have wipes, hand sanitizer, um, you have washcloths, disposable razors, toothpaste, toothbrush, the normal necessities that you would need on a day-to-day -day -day basis, basically. Miss Allen says the additional stress of job losses, coupled with limited income, has made it even more difficult for those living with the condition. Stress triggers flares. And anybody knows once you are stressed, and especially if you're stressed mentally, your body tends to react different. So obviously pain that you would have gotten only when your menstruation starts, you have period <laughs> all through the pandemic. And you know, mental health is very important, especially in this crisis, because <laughs> I am telling you some of the conversations that I have with these women, especially the frustration, there's nobody there to help. There's nobody there that understands. So if you don't have a support system that is backing you, I am telling you, it's going to have a really, really bad impact on that individual. And with Barbados preparing to ease the lockdown measures, Ms. Allen hopes more people will become considerate of those with endometriosis or reach out to the foundation. Rianne Phillips, CBC News. Welcome back. Well, while much of the attention is currently on the COVID-19 pandemic, Home Affairs Minister Edmund Hinkson is appealing to Barbadians to also prepare themselves for the hurricane season that starts in just under a month. We all need to ensure that our properties are as clear of bush as is possible and that our drains are clear. The hardware stores will be open again from this Monday to sell building equipment, building supplies which can be used to fix any part of your home which needs fixing to be able to withstand any adverse weather conditions. Those who are financially able must ensure that their houses are as comprehensively insured as possible. And he says government has also been playing its part in keeping the island's environment as clean as possible to prevent cases of flooding. We are of course fully aware that a lot of people are under severe economic pressure now, what with the la loss of jobs within the last two months as a result of COVID-19. The government of Barbados will work together with you to ensure that you are as safe and secure as possible during this hurricane season. Well, the search for a missing schoolboy and member of the Game Fishing Association, Amali Mears, was called off around noon today due to poor visibility. The efforts are set to continue tomorrow when drones are expected to be used in the operation. The 16-year-old went missing on May 1st after heading out on a small boat to dive for fish to give to the less fortunate. Master Chief Petty Officer Malcolm Thompson says 20 divers combed the waters along the east coast for any sign of the missing teen. Chief of Lifeguards Ken Mears who also assisted with that search, explained the challenges posed by the sea conditions. This morning, now the current has changed. There's a slight on the tour coming from the north now, and reports from the divers now is that when they went into the same area as yesterday, the current is moving southeast. So this current now is heading from this St. Joseph area 
going to St. John coming back. So, and the visibility is poor this morning. Some of the divers started about 20 to 30 feet apart and within a few minutes they were bunch on top of each other between 5 to 10 feet. The representative body for journalists and media workers in Barbados is reporting progress on a number of issues affecting its members. This as Barbados joins other countries in celebrating World Press Freedom Day 2020 under the theme Journalism Without Fear or Favor. President of the Barbados Association of Journalists and Media Workers, Emmanuel Joseph, says since January, COVID-19 has blocked a number of plans and programs that would have benefited media practitioners. Now, despite this, there have been some positives to report. I can announce that following a proposal submitted to the Attorney General, Dale Marshall, requesting permission for reporters to do audio recordings of the proceedings of the law courts, we have been officially informed that the Barjam request has been forwarded to the Registrar for her input and for the input of the Magistracy and Judiciary. We look forward to a favorable outcome. I can also say to you that while media wars, which had been planned in partnership with the Argentine Embassy to coincide with World Press Freedom Day this month, had to be cancelled due to the lockdown, the U.S. Embassy is now on board with us to fund a major media wars slated for late November. Now, Mr. Joseph says Barjam still has a, at the top of its agenda the establishment of a benevolent fund to assist members who fall on hard times and the need for a government to introduce the long-mooted Freedom of Information Bill in Parliament. Now, Barjam also acknowledges government's decision to declare the media an essential service during the ongoing state of public health emergency and hopes this designation is not only for times of crisis but for all time.